Good to see everybody on whatever platform you are. You have joined us. <laughs> I want to be able to see everybody. Let me get this grid. Okay. All right. Um, we just are excited about all of this great technology. And uh, we're going to get started tonight uh, with prayer. And uh, then we'll jump right into it. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. We thank you for how you continue to minister to us in the various and sundry ways in which you do. Thank you, dear God, for all the persons that are joining us on tonight. Thank you for all of this wonderful technology that allows us to connect with one another, even during times of social distancing. We ask, dear God, that you empty us of self, fill us continually with your spirit, and fill us, dear God, with a greater understanding of you on tonight. We pray that when we leave from this virtual Bible study, that your name is further glorified and we are further edified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Y'all doing all right? pretty good doing pretty good just just you know jumping back into the work week um again All just right. as i mentioned on sunday just appreciate everything everybody uh did and continues to do um as you know as i wrestle with all that my family and i are wrestling with uh, so just thank everybody so much. Scribe, you, I see your face, and I'm seeing you type over here. You are doing it. Look at you, Sister <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> she is multitasking like a like a teenager. <laughs> and she's playing me off. Oh, all right, okay, all right. Uh, tonight, uh, just as we did on last week, we kind of ventured away from where we had been, and I'm going to back up a little bit tonight and deal with grace. Uh, God just has laid that on my heart as everybody um, has been so gracious. Uh, and I just think about how First Baptist Church of East Nashville has such a great reputation of being a gracious ministry. And I don't mean gracious just by being humble in the gifts that come our way, but gracious in acting in the way that God pours out his grace on us. I see your sister Jewel, as God pours out uh, his grace on us, we have have been exercising in such a way to pour out grace on others. I can think of all the families um, at First Baptist Church of East Nashville uh, that have gone through seasons of bereavement and just have watched um, very pleasingly so in how our church family has been gracious in the way we've ministered to families. Uh, and now I've been able to, you know, not with a desire to, but I've been able to, to uh, be a firsthand witness to uh, the grace in which uh, God uses First Baptist Church of East Nashville to minister to us. I see First Lady is on with us uh, tonight. Um, and you all just pray for her as well. You know, after everything was was uh, over and done with, she stayed here until Monday, and she went back to work on Monday. Um, she left Nashville on Monday to go back to work on yesterday. And so she's she's in Huntsville by herself, as I'm in Nashville by myself. The kids are off doing their things. Uh, so, you know, just pray for her in Oakley. <laughs> big Oakley the dog um you know as she as she wrestles uh you know with this on her own and so tonight we're gonna go we're still in the manual still in the in the membership manual for Baptist church but we're going back and looking at God's purpose of grace God's purpose of grace we want to just uh look at that again tap into that and um just again see how we've been plugging in uh, and also how God just works in a wonderful way uh, in our own individual lives uh, through his grace, graciousness. So I'm going to read the statement as it relates to God's purpose of grace, and then we'll 
We'll delve back into it. Uh, so that statement says, we believe that the scriptures teach that election is the eternal purpose of God, according to which he graciously regenerates, sanctifies, and saves sinners. That being perfectly consistent with the free agency of man, it comprehends all the means in connection with the end that it is a most glorious display of God's sovereign goodness, being infinitely free, wise, holy, and unchangeable, that it utterly excludes boasting and promotes humility, love, prayer, praise, trust in God, and active imitation of his free mercy, that it encourages the use of means in the highest degree, that it may be ascertained by its effects in all who truly believe the gospel, that it is the foundation of Christian assurance, and that to ascertain it with regard to ourselves demands and deserves the utmost diligence. All right, so First Lady is on, she's doing uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram. I don't know how she's doing both of them, but anyway, maybe she's switching back and forth. But anyway, so we're looking at grace tonight. Let's look at this definition. Um, definition of grace, unmerited divine assistance given to humans for the regeneration, for the regeneration or sanctification. Unmerited divine assistance, undeserved, unworked for, um, nothing that you had to strain and strive for, God just gives it to us. It is a virtue. Grace is a virtue coming from God. Grace is a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. A state of sanctification. I love that as we talk about being sanctified. Grace is approval or favor. It is mercy or pardon. It is a special favor, a privilege. Grace is a disposition to or an act of instance of kindness, courtesy, or clemency. Grace is a temporary ex exemption or reprieve. Grace is a charming or attractive trait of characteristics. I hope, like, like myself, persons can see God in that in those definitions, you can see how God has has moved on your own life. You can uh, recall the times when you've witnessed God moving in the life of other persons. In all of these uh, ways, at one time or another, grace grace is something um, that we need just as much as we need mercy. I think we all understand how when we've done something, uh, we need for God to be merciful, for God not to punish us as our actions so deserve. But we need God's grace. Um, we've heard the, the good church flow of, of God's grace is sufficient. His grace, his unmerited favor, his, his doing for us what we're not deserving of is enough to get us through any of life's situations. Grace, Amen. God's God's grace. God's grace uh, is what can operate in a way when you don't deserve the promotion, but God will move on your behalf and give you that grace and give you that promotion anyway. God's grace is when you have more month than money, but you have been diligent in being a tither and God graciously uh, extends a cutoff date. God's grace is, is yeah. when uh, uh, everybody around you is pulling out their hair because of what's going on with their corporation, but God gives you a peace that passes all understanding. That's God's yeah. grace. We see Sister Carita is on Facebook Live with us. Sister Carita, we've been praying for you. We have other folk, extended parts of our church that are praying for you as well. Even on last night, I had dinner uh, with, with Pastor Jeff uh, Wilkins, 
um, uh, and uh, he brought up your name, and we prayed for you. He and his wife and I prayed for you even last night, Sister Corita. We're just believing uh, God's healing power to bring you through uh, this situation uh, with flying colors. So just know your church family is praying for you. Uh, and Amen. it's not because Amen. you deserve it. It's just because God has laid it on our heart. You good people, though. So maybe you do deserve it uh, because you sow seeds of praying for folks. But anyway, uh, God's grace, God's grace. And so we will just want to look at that for a little while tonight. And um, we'll see what the Lord even reveals uh, in this in this stew that we'll be eating tonight. So as we begin to pull apart that long statement at the beginning, uh, we first look at uh, that first statement. We believe that the scriptures teach, you know, before even finishing up, I just like to stop right there and just say, as a Christian, we have to be able to make that statement in every aspect of our life with every aspect of what God's word says. We believe that the scriptures teach us how to love, how to give, how to how to treat one another, how to treat God. We believe that the scriptures teach. We don't have to listen to what the world says. We don't have to listen to what our civic and social organizations say. We don't have to listen to what social media may imply. We just have to turn to God's word and say, we believe that the scriptures teach. Even when I don't like the way an orange man behaves, God has told me to pray for this man on a daily basis. And so I'm going to believe what the word says and I'm going to pray because uh, the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And so we probably haven't been praying as much as we need to as a collective body of believers on behalf of the person who sits in the White House. God would have us to pray. We need to be praying because God's word says that we should for for Vice President Joe Biden. We need to be praying that his mind stays sharp and that anything that he may have done in his past, God has forgiven him for and it needs to stay in his past. We need to pray that whomever he selects is the right person to energize the African American demographic. We need to be praying because we believe that scripture teach that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And if we desire for much to happen in this world, we've got to move in the ways that God would have us to move. I was listening to Pastor Frank Ray, Dr. Frank Ray out of Memphis on today. Now, you know, I'm, I got a little old school in me and Dr. Ray is one of this country's greatest hooping preachers. I mean, he does it in a way that, that a whole lot of folk try to imitate. But before he gives you the gravy, he gives you a whole lot of meat to chew on. And he was he was pulling apart, uh, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then uh, will I. Yeah, so um, we need to be about doing what God's word says because we believe that the scriptures teach. Now we can keep going for tonight that the election is the eternal purpose of God. We believe scriptures teach. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 4 and 5. So I, I've got tonight, uh, and I probably, when we get back to face-to-face -face Bible study, I'll probably bring this Bible with me a lot because uh, this has four versions in it right there together. It's a parallel Bible, and so it has King James, NIV, Living Bible, and New Revised Standard all right here together. I don't have to pull different Bibles to get all of this. It's got it all right here. And so I'm going to read uh, King James first, and then I'll probably read the Living Bible um, a version of these same two verses. So First uh, Thessalonians 1, verses 4 and 5. Knowing, brethren, beloved, uh, your election of God 
For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. We're talking about election, uh, those that God has chosen. Uh, reading those same two verses from uh, the Living Bible, it says, we know that God has chosen you, dear, dear brethren, much beloved of God. For when we brought you the good news, it was not just meaningless chatter to you. No, you listened with great interest. What we told you produced a powerful effect upon you, for the Holy Spirit gave you great and full assurance that what we said was true. And you know how our very lives were further proof to you of the truth of our message. So, first of all, Part of God's grace is the fact that he chose you even when you weren't deserving of it. Mm. Uh, that's unmerited favor. Uh, even before you accepted him, he already had chosen you. Um, that's that's a wonderful thing to know that, it, that we are the elect of God, that God uh, has made a conscious decision to be gracious to us. It was not an accident. It's not just a blanket, generic kind of grace. And he does that. The sun, he lets his sun shine on us. And I'm looking at my wonder here. And I mean, that's, that's grace that God extends to everybody. But there are some things God does for you as an individual that nobody else can claim. He's giving you your personality. Nobody else can claim that. He's giving you your speech pattern. Nobody else can claim that. And you do understand that it's God's unmerited favor that allows you to be able to utter a word because somebody wants to talk and they can't talk. And so you need to be thankful that God gives you a voice. He gives you a voice. Let's look at John, uh, John's Gospel, uh, chapter 6, verse 44. Now, since I can see y'all tonight, uh, y'all that are on um, Zoom, you know, feel free to raise a hand, grab my attention, uh, do whatever. <laughs> if you start dancing, I'm going to have to call you out, but anything else, fine with me. So, uh, John's record of the gospel, chapter 6, verse 44. I'm going to read this time from the NIV and then the uh, New Revised Standard. Uh, verse 44 uh, reads, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Uh, that same verse uh, in the New Revised Standard no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. Again, um, no one comes to Christ unless God draws them to him. Uh, now, that can be kind of rough uh, uh, for those folk, you know, sometimes when we're witnessing, and, and since we don't know who God has chosen, God says, just go out there and be a witness and go out there and witness for me to everybody because uh, it's God's desire that nobody uh, be lost, but everybody be saved. But uh, it is good to know that you are the chosen of God and that even while you thought it was you that was coming to God, it was God drawing you. Anybody ever been flirted with? Uh, if y'all can raise your hand, I know all of y'all ladies here. Somebody I'm flirting with you at least once uh, before. All of y'all are brothers, so I know y'all been flirting with at least one time. Uh, I see you, brother uh, Jay, over there, and Sister Joyce. God, in essence, flirts with us to draw us to him. Uh, I know that's a crazy way to think about it, but when God has done something, uh, pulled you out of a situation, he's flirting with you. When God has uh, extended his grace in whatever 
shape, and form that has been extended to you. That's God flirting with you. When God allowed his son to die on the cross, that's God flirting with you in a big way. He bought you roses, took you uh, to Morton Steakhouse for dinner, and bought you a big old friendship ring as well. God fl has flirted with us at various times in an effort to draw us to him. Since Melody is on one of these platforms, I don't know where she is at this moment, but uh, when we think about um, what God has done, think about that time when when um, your significant other went out of their way, even when you were kind of playing them off. Because I can just imagine all of y'all ladies on Zoom and probably the ones on Facebook and ones on Instagram have at some point played off the person that you are with today or have been with at some point in your life. They came at you and you played them off and they kept coming at you and you kept playing them off. And then at some point, the flirting took seed, uh, it took hold, and you began to respond uh, to, their, uh, um, to their pleading for your attention. God pleads for our attention in various and sundry ways because he has chosen us. Uh, I see you, Brother Jay. His goodness leads us towards repentance. That's right. Um, you got to turn from some things even when you enter into a, a singular relationship with somebody. You got to turn from some other folk to get there. When we are out there in the world and God is flirting with us to draw us to him, We've got to turn from some things in order to establish a good relationship with him. That's repentance. That happens in the natural, in a relationship, and it happens in our relationship with God. You can't serve two masters. You can't have two boyfriends. You can't have two girlfriends. You got to choose one, and God says, I'm the one that you ought to be choosing. I see you, Dr. Kim Taylor. Uh, so God flirts with us. He chooses us, uh, and we believe that the scriptures teach that election, that God choosing us is the eternal purpose of God. He is choosing us with everything he has. And then we believe that he does this because he graciously is regenerating us. He's graciously um, making us over. Let's look at Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. Ephesians 2 in the King James, those verses say, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Looking at that um, in the Living Bible, verses 4 and 5 of chapter 2. But God is so rich in mercy, he loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, he gave us back our lives again when he raised Christ from the dead. Only by his undeserved favor have we ever been saved. He brought us back to life. He regenerates us. He regenerates us. I see his sister, Marie, you got that green screen going on back there, don't you? She's working in the news or something, boy. She's got a green screen. She's going to be pointing at the weather or something in a minute. There's an overcast cloud and a cold front coming uh, from Kentucky now. Is that what you're going to be doing? You're practicing that, Sister Maria. I see you. <laughs> hey, I wish y'all could see the green screen. And she's got this great park going on back then. I know she's not at the park right now, but maybe she is. Who knows? Uh, so we're talking about um, regeneration uh, to see if we can help people grab uh, that and make understand it of it. I see you, Deacon Jermaine. Um, how many folk remember the movie, um, um, the movie Frankenstein? Now, I know this is a big stretch. But in Frankenstein, uh, 
they took a bunch of dead things, put them together to make this body. And then at the right night when the lightning's flashing and they raise up this big ball for the lightning to hit it, that power surges uh, through the lightning and hits that and it charges into this body and what was once dead now becomes alive. Well, God doesn't make us into monsters, but what God does is he takes what was dead and our relationship with him breathes life back into it. Now, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense for those uh, while we're walking on this side of the grave. But just understand that this is just a temporary place that we're existing in right now. This is temporal. We are destined for eternity. Now, eternity can be in a place that's filled with life. Uh, eternity can be in a place that's filled with death. But we are destined for eternity. And God, the relationship with God through his grace, regenerates us and makes us alive. It prepares us for our next destination because, again, whether or not it is two years or whether or not it's 101 years, it is but a blip in our eternal history, the time that we spend here on earth. We are destined Amen. for another place. And so we have to understand that God, the relationship with God brings us back to life because we are dead to sin. We can be like zombies with a place destined for the dead, or we can be regenerated, brought back to life in a place uh, that is filled with God's presence continually. And so he graciously, because it's not that we deserve it, the only thing we've done is confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Anything else, we can't earn, we can't work, we can't do enough to deserve God blessing us with eternal life. But he graciously, because he's chosen us, he said, I'm choosing sister Velma Woods. Let's hook her up. Boom, she's charged. She's brought back to life. Let's look at sister Marva Wynn. Oh, boom, she's back to life. He, let's get a green screen and get Sister Flowers. Boom, she's back <laughs> to life. God regenerates us even while we were yet dead, and he brings us back to life. And so yeah. it's because of his grace. It's because of his grace. And so not only does he regenerate us, but then he sanctifies us, mm, cleans us up. I want to pause before we even look at the, the verse associated with that. Too many times before folk will come walk down that aisle uh, to join a church and say, I got to get myself together. I got to get my life right. I got to quit going here. I got to quit going there. I got to quit talking to these folk. I got to quit doing this bad habit. And we are merely fish. God says that, Give me yourself and I'll make you fishers of men, which says then God's describing us in a way of being fish that need to be caught. I've not seen one fish. I don't care if you are in Africa and fish are jumping in your boat. I don't care if you are fishing on the muddy Mississippi. I don't care if you down under the bridge at the Cumberland throwing it out there. When a fish is caught, it does not get in there and start cleaning itself up. That fish does not get busy cleaning. You can't take a fish right from the water and put it in the pan and eat it up. You know, if you go to whatever restaurant, Logan's, and get some black and catfish, or go to, uh, uh, um, I can't even think of the name of that seafood restaurant that everybody likes to go to, but Red Lobster. You can't go to Red Lobster and get, your, sea, Lobster. And get your cedar plank, uh, black and salmon, and think that everything's going to be good straight out of the water. It's had to be cleaned. It's had to be cut. The bad parts have had to be removed. Some fish, they deep bone them the whole nine. The fish is not ready when it's caught. God catches us and cleans us. That's what sanctification is. It's scrubbing you out. Sanctification is putting that cleaning agent called the blood and it washes us 
from the mess that we are filled with. It washes us. You can take old muddy fish, and I bet I could give it to Jewel, and Jewel and her sisters would make that thing a, a, a delightful <laughs> uh, piece of food to enjoy for the night. I'm certain of that. I don't care how muddy uh, the fish was when it was given to her. By the time it reached your plate, uh, you're going to be like, Lord, have mercy. This must have come from some special water right here because this fish sure is good. Well, uh, God cleans us up from the mess that we are filled with, the mess that we've been surrounded by, the mess of our, the mess of our past. God, through his sanctification, cleans us. Now, I want somebody to understand that sanctification don't always feel good, uh, but it's necessary. Uh, it, it's not always fun when folk are removed from your life, but that's part of being sanctified. It's not fun when when bad habits are removed from you, but that's part of being sanctified. It's not good when you're made to look in the mirror and look at the stuff that you used to do and used to be a part of your bad habits, but it is a part of being sanctified by God and it is necessary. So having said all of that, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. And I need for y'all to be turning to y'all Bibles as well. Don't have me being the only one. First Corinthians 6, verse 11. All right. King James and Living Bible again. Uh, verse 11. And such were some of you. Uh, I'm going to start that reading from verse 9 and read down. Uh, through verse 11, beginning at verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Oh, that's some heavy stuff. I'm going to read that same um, from uh, the Living Bible. Do you know, don't you know that those doing such things have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who live in moral lives, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, or homosexuals will have no share in his kingdom. Neither will thieves or greedy people, drunkards, slanderers, or robbers. There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins are washed away and you are set apart for God and he has accepted you because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of our God has done for you. Amen. Sanctifies. Uh, now, because we all fit in those descriptions in some shape, form, or fashion, nobody can look down their nose Nobody can point a finger at. Nobody can try to suggest that what you're doing is worse than what I'm doing. All of it is displeasing in the sight of God, and all of it is worthy of avoiding uh, what God desires to do with you and for you. But by being chosen by God, uh, by being regenerated by God, God washes us. He does things or allows things to happen in our life to rid us of the mess that he's not pleased with. And again, that's not always comfortable. But God does the work. We've talked about it before. Uh, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Justification is buying your airline ticket. You got your ticket for the plane. You received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. You got your ticket into glory. 
But before you can get on the plane, you got to go through the security checkpoint. And there are things that you cannot get on the plane with. You just can't do it. I I, I don't know about anybody else. I've had to, to forfeit some expensive cologne by trying to get on the plane. I forgot that you couldn't. Yeah, I, I figure Sister Shan has had to deal with it before. I've, I've gone and I just had a brand new bottle of cologne. You know, spent whatever amount of money I had to spend on it. And they said, sir, you can't take that on the plane. I was like, the devil is a lie. I'm taking this on the plane. They said, well, uh, you can stay with this here in Nashville, or you can leave this here in Nashville, and you can go on and get in the, on the plane. And because it was surrounding a work trip I had to go on, I figured I still needed my job, and my job and paycheck were worth more than that bottle of cologne was. Well, the same thing happens with us. There are people who say, I just can't let this go. God, you're going to have to let me uh, in the glory with this mess. And God says, I'm not going to lower my standard just to make you happy. I'm going to be gracious. I see yourself. I'm crying about toothpaste, huh? Uh, 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 <laughs> um, some people don't want to let drinking go. Some don't want to let uh, uh, being a drunkard and going to the club. Some people don't want to let being uh, a whoremonger. Some don't want to let homosexuality. Some don't want to let lying go. Some, I mean, folk say, this is who I am. This is a part of who I am, and I'm not letting it go. And God does his job of cleaning us. But you ever had a little child, little boys especially, who you clean up, say, we got to go uh, to a wedding. Uh, we've got a dinner with the family that we've got to go to. I see you, Sister Ebony. Uh, we've got somewhere that we've got to go, and I'm putting on these dress-up clothes, and you better not go get dirty. I bathed you. I ironed your clothes. I put them all, combed your hair. I did everything that needed to be done to get you ready for this party, and you went outside while I was putting the finishing touches on my hair and you found the biggest puddle of mud or a big hill of dirt or whatever to go roll around in, even though I've cleaned you up. Well, there are folk out there who do the same thing. God does his job by working to clean us up. Uh, but because he's also given us free will, many times we decide to go right back into the mud from which God has delivered us. But God's grace uh, regenerates us, and his grace sanctifies us. And then uh, uh, his grace saves us. Oh, man, I could preach those three points right there, and I'd be uh, real good. Um, so it sanctifies us, and then it saves us. His grace saves us, even when uh, we are deserving of the punishment uh, uh, that our actions have suggested. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he have made him, talking about Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And then reading it from the uh, Living Bible, for God took the sinless Christ and poured into him our sins. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. He saves us. Uh, heaven, glory, um, this place that we desire to go uh, has no sin in it. To the point that God, because we do understand that everything that has been created has been created by God. That's including the angels. Angels are created beings. When a legion of angels decided to rebel against God led by Lucifer, God said, this behavior will not exist. He could have just tapped them on the hand and let them stay. But God says, sin will not be in heaven and he kicked them out. 
And so what God does then is he says, I'm going to save you so that you can now uh, reside in glory with me. But to do that, I'm going to have to take your sins and put them on my son who will then sacrifice himself on the cross. That's what you're deserving. But because I'm so gracious, I'm going to do this for you and then put my goodness on your ledger say. So when I look at your ledger, instead of it being in the negative, it's going to be in the positive. That's what God's grace does for us. So God's grace, uh, it elects us. It regenerates us, it sanctifies us, it saves us. Uh, and then uh, we believe that being perfectly consistent with the free agency of man, grace comprehends all the means and connections with the end. In other words, grace does everything necessary to get us to a point of salvation, to get us into a point uh, where we can then experience glorification. Uh, the free agency of man. We've been dealing with a lot of football players that have been going through free agency where they can make the choice uh, to stay with this team or go to another team. Derrick Henry signed a big contract because he was a free agent. Dak Prescott with the Cowboys um, is going through a situation right now because he's a free agent and he's wanting a certain amount of money and the Cowboys don't want to pay him that amount of money. Free agency. And so we are free agents. Uh, God gives us free will, which makes us then free agents and we can choose. But God's grace understands that and does everything necessary to flirt with us and bring us to a point of salvation. Let's look at 1 Peter 1, verses 8 through 10. Y'all enjoying this tonight? Yes. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. I got somebody on Facebook called Dundeal. Hey, Dundeal, I don't know who you are, but uh, <laughs> that's an interesting name. First name Dunn, <laughs> second name Deal. Dunn Deal. Dunn okay. Deal. Not Don Deal, but Dunn Deal. Dunn Deal. Yeah, tell us who you are, Dunn Deal. <laughs> Boy, this Bible is so, so big because it's got all of this stuff in it. First Peter. 1, 8 through 10, King James. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believe and ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now reading from the Living Bible, uh, those same verses. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though not seeing him, you trust him. And even now you are happy with an inexpressible joy that comes from heaven itself. And your further reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This salvation was something the prophets did not fully understand, though they wrote about it. They had many questions as to what it could all mean. And keep, I'm going to keep reading verse 11. They wondered what the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about, for he told them to write down the events which, since then, have happened to Christ, his suffering and his great glory afterwards. And they wondered when and to whom all this would happen. All the stuff that Christ did was, in essence, the grace that went out of its way to reach the end of our salvation. Christ has gone out of his way, even in our present day time, God goes out of his way, not only to flirt with us, but to make sure that we have every opportunity possible to receive him as Savior and Lord. He goes out of his way. Think about all the things that you've done in your life and all the times that he could have taken you out 
yet God went out of his way to make sure you had the opportunity to receive him before the end was written for your life. I think about Amen. the times when guns have been held to my head. I think about the coma that I was in from a car wreck. I think about the two knee surgeries I've had. I, I mean, I think about that in any of those instances could have taken me out, but God went out of his way to make sure that his end for me included my salvation. Yes. yes. I could have at any point uh, been out under a bridge somewhere, but God's grace, God extended his grace over my life to make sure that I not only would fulfill the purpose for which he created me, but that the end goal of my salvation would be secure. And because God is not a respecter of person, everything he's done for anybody is the same things that he's done for you. They just look different. You know, the testimonies that God has done for me looks different from everybody else on this screen and everybody that's on Facebook and Instagram is different, but it's the same in essence of God saying, I'm going out of my way to extend my grace because I will do everything necessary to get you saved. Everything I've selected you, I've elected you, and now I want to make sure that you have the opportunities to be saved. That is a wonderful gift that God has given that we're not deserving of, but God has done it anyway. And since God has done it, that is reason enough to shout glory right there. Amen. We're going to end on that tonight. We'll pick back up on next Wednesday, uh, still in grace. Um, but I think that's just a good place to leave is just knowing that God goes out of his way, out of yes. his way, and, and does whatever is necessary. I think as we think about the racial times that we're in, I'm reminded of the picture of Malcolm X peering out of the curtains with the gun and saying by any means necessary, meaning that uh, whatever I've got to do to ensure my equal rights and my safety and my liberty by any means necessary, I'm going to make sure that that happens. Where Christ has looked over uh, the banks of heaven and said, I will do anything necessary to ensure that those that God has given to me, the Father has given to me, will, will realize salvation in their life. And we should be thankful. I see you, Reverend Bonnie. We should be thankful that God goes out of his way on a continuous basis to help us realize salvation and the peace that he presents to us. It's been a blessing on tonight uh, to uh, see folk. Uh, if you get a chance, get on Zoom, y'all. It's a wonderful thing. I'm getting feedback. I've got a couple of mean mugs along the way, but that's all right, too. <laughs> uh, I love y'all. I miss y'all more than y'all can understand. Boy, uh, preaching to some pews uh, is, is, is something else, y'all. I'm here to let you know today. Uh, so uh, this is wonderful. We need to get a big old screen up at the church and, and just have this Zoom broadcast there and that that would be a wonderful thing uh uh so maybe we need to work on that we've got officers meeting uh you know we got board meeting this saturday uh so maybe we bring that up hang a big sheet or something up and get a little home uh something uh but whatever the case i'm gonna talk to my technician there uh sister boyd and see what we can do but anyway love you all so much Love you all so much. Uh, done deal, my cuz pass. I see you. Uh, uh, that's your cuz. Okay, done deal is Jermaine's cousin. I get it now. Done deal. I love it. All right. Um, anyway, Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you is our prayer. And we'll see you on Sunday uh, with 
with um, Sunday school and worship, and you all continue to pray for one another and pray for me. Love you all so much. Be blessed. Bye. 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 Bye.